goodbye, baby, on the tree. When people talk about the hardest bosses in From Software games, one name is consistently near the top of the list. Yep, it's the screaming, flailing, leaping, bubbly placenta swinging, scrawny cosmic fish spawn baby himself, the orphan of Coz. He hits harder than a whole tray of weed brownies, has more moves than a chess match, and is probably responsible for an entire landfill of broken controllers. But what if you could trivialise all of that by putting this big sobbing infant into bed in an instant? In other words, can you one-shot the orphan of Coz? Let's be clear here. The single goal of this run is to see if it's possible to kill the orphan with one attack. And by one attack, I actually mean a backstab leading into a visceral. Now, you can power level all you want, but even at max level this wouldn't be enough by itself to kill Orphan in a single attack on normal new game. So, I set out on a journey to see how far I could push the envelope. You're all more than welcome to join me. Just because I had an end goal in sight, doesn't mean I won't jump at the chance to play through my favourite game for the millionth time anyway. I made myself look far more handsome than I do in real life, which isn't hard to achieve even with FromSoft's potato character creator. Chose military veteran as my starter class, cause I'm about that life. Did butt stuff to a dying wolf. Chose the litter picker as my starting weapon for shits and giggles. It doesn't really matter as I would be changing weapons soon, and anyway, I wanted the cane for testing purposes later. I did the Yarnum Marathon to grab 8 shards and the sauce beer, tried out my best pickup lines on Eileen, upped my sauce beer to plus 2, ran circles around Cleric Beast until he got confused and died, parried a Molotov Daddy Garlic into an early grave, opened up the Cathedral Ward and ran straight down to Old Yarnum. Old Man Jorah tried to scare me away with his big gun, but I said, call that a gun, mate. This is a gun. Reloaded the game for the badge and worked on levelling. For now, my only focus was to raise Vit to a serviceable standard and then concentrate on levelling skill. Firepaper and cocktails make light work of Susie skin flaps. Oh, okay, look, you didn't see that. Like I was saying, easy victory here. I visited the old workshop next, got the twin shards on the way, picked up the vintage clothing for resale purposes, opened up the cathedral ward, grabbed more shards and a decent gem, sprinted through Hemwick for more shards where I died like a twat not once, not three times, but, um, twice. Reached the witches and instantly reconsidered my decision. I plus fived my spear and gemmed it up, spoke to Eileen again and we double teamed Henrik like an adult video, leveled some more, bought the Ashen Garb and Henrik set to spend all my insight, returned to the witches to chain backstab them into next week, hacked away at Amelia until she said, oof, ouchie, my limbs, killed the hunter nearby for some bolt paper, took a brief detour to the Hypogean jail, goal? Gale? Returned to head to the bitey snaky tree zone where I grabbed everything valuable, took the back door to the clinic for the Canehurst summons, Went to visit Dracula's palace where I picked up some useful chunks, plus seven my saw spear, and went back to the woods to carve up some shadows. Bergenworth was as disappointingly short as ever, Rom was as cute and spidery as ever, and Yahargul was as much of a hectic mess as ever. I grabbed all the chunks, as well as this decent gem and the upper ward key, stunlocked the one reborn to assert dominance, swept through the lecture building and the nightmare for even more chunks, spanked Mikolash and definitely didn't cheese him with poison knives whatsoever. This footage must be from a different playthrough or something. Cleared out the loft, grabbed myself a handy little blood rock to plus 10 my spear with and chipped away at wet nurse for an easy victory. Main game. Completed it mate. Time to tidy up some of the loose ends. I embarrassed Paul so hard he could barely stand up from the shame. Grab the Radiant Sword Hunter badge on the way to the upper ward, poked the brain sucker through the locked door until he mysteriously died, collected more chunks, killed this absolute farce of a boss, and made light work of poor Ebrietus by standing in her armpit. Tentacle pit? And turning her into calamari rings with my trusty saw spear in order to obtain the Izzz's chalice. 
Then it was on to the lower lecture hall where I squished an ugly spider before heading to the Nightmare Frontier to grab all the available loot and to give everyone's favourite angry walnut Amy G a massive headache. This is going extremely smoothly so far. I must be a god at this game or something. Fetid rotted cursed chalices are a great description of the used coffee cups I've left on my desk for the last few days. They're also the only place in Bloodborne to find top tier blood gems, which is what I would need for this challenge. Normally, you would have to clear out most of the story dungeons in order to be able to access these, but fear not the old blood, my friend. And let me show you how to skip all that bullshit and make FRCs the quick way. Firstly, create the first Tumaru Chalice and clear out layers 1 and 2 to obtain the Root Chalice from the Watchers. Don't worry, at this level it's about as challenging as putting two Lego bricks together. With the Root Chalice, search for this glyph. This dungeon is an exact mirror of the Defiled Story Chalice that you can normally only access later on, with the added bonus that your HP isn't actually halved anymore. Loot all the available ritual materials from layer 1, as you're gonna need these, and kill the crazy witch cosplay boss. Whatever you do, make sure you don't die when she has 0.1 HP left. That would be embarrassing. Then, proceed to layer 2 and collect all the available ritual materials from here as well. At this point, I had accumulated enough insight to be able to afford a blood rock from the messengers. So I took a small break to buy one for later use, up my stats to 30 vit and 60 skill, and pop back to old Yarnum to grab the charred hunter set. Take down the hot dog of the old lords on layer 2 surprisingly easily, and proceed to layer 3 to collect all the materials there as well. Don't worry, there's no need for Amy G sloppy seconds, you're done here. Next up, go to this glyph, kill the brain sucker boss on layer 1, and on layer 2 collect 3 bastard of Lorans, bastards of Loran, whatever the plural is. There's one in the side area after the lamp, guarded by a brain sucker who obviously got demoted from boss to grunt after his poor showing on layer 1, and two more in the main area in a chest. Finally, visit this glyph to find a messenger bath in the side area after the first lamp, where you need to buy the lower Loran, Tumaru Hill, and Iz Sinister Root Chalices. Easy peasy. By now, I'd picked up all the materials I needed to create an FRC using the defiled root chalice I'd obtained from Hot Dog. I'll post the link to the spreadsheet I used that details this in the description anyway, because I'm a nice guy like that. After a short detour to this glyph to grab the top tier eye rune from the side area after the first lamp, I equipped all three eye runes and it was time to farm. Today's crop of choice is poor man's gems, which is ideal, since I am indeed an extremely poor man. All donations generously accepted. Poor man's gems have an attack bonus modifier for when you're at low health. Kind of like the red tear stone ring in Dark Souls, but with the added bonus that you can put three on your weapon at once for an absolute unit of a damage bonus. And you can farm them from the ooky spoopy ghost ladies in the chalices. The ones I specifically wanted give you a primary attack bonus with a secondary effect of attack up at low HP. The curse is largely irrelevant, unless it's the HP drain which is a no-no. Orphan isn't classed as beast or kin, so the curses that reduce damage against these enemy types will have no impact, and weapon durability wasn't going to be an issue either. I farmed a bunch of radial gems from this glyph, where there's a friendly Casper in the main area, and also a bunch of triangle gems from this glyph. These weren't necessarily the absolute best I could obtain, but for now they would do. Don't worry ladies, I'll be back later for more hot steamy ghost gangbang action. Remember when I was actually playing the game and not just nerding out over chalice dungeons? I remember. I let Amy tickle me and take me to the DLC, grab the pendant, mashed my way through Simon's dialogue, slapped a horse around like a bad equestrian trainer, opened up the research hall, and hacked Spicy Larry to death to obtain the Beast Embrace rune, which I would also need later. 
After clearing out the research hall and downing the living failures who lived up to their name, I made a small detour into this glyph where I grabbed the top tier claw mark rune from a side area. I equipped all three claw mark runes and prepared myself for sexy time with Lady Maria. With high visceral damage, she becomes extremely easy, so this fight went completely smoothly and what you see in this footage definitely didn't actually happen. After a second attempt went slightly better, I opened up the hamlet, grabbed the key off a dying Simon, killed Braidor in his cell and picked up all the pieces of his outfit scattered around. These offer some of the highest beasthood stats in the game, so would be extremely useful. It was finally time to test out my damage on Orphan. So I took the cane I had picked up at the start of the game, plus tend it, popped my three best poor man's gems on it, made sure I had all three claw mark runes on for the visceral bonuses, and headed to the beach for a quick game of Frosty Pokey with the big baby himself. Time for another quick nerd break, so let's talk about visceral damage for a sec. Viscerals scale with three different things in Bloodborne. The first and most important of those is your skill stat, which is why getting it to 99 for this challenge is essential. The second is the thrust damage output of your weapon, which is why I did my first tests with the cane, as its R2 attack deals purely in thrust damage. Finally, you get a small visceral bonus from your overall character level, which increases in steps up to the hard cap of level 200. More on this later. My basic plan for Orphan was as follows. Lower my health to below the threshold where the gem bonus is kicking by making some blood bullets, blowing my load everywhere and repeating until ready. Bait out his jump attack and perform a backstab and visceral on him, which would do two separate chunks of damage. The backstab part of the attack would be purely based on my actual weapon damage, whereas the visceral part of the attack would scale off the stats I mentioned previously. Here goes nothing, I guess. Not bad at all, but I could definitely do better. For the final challenge, I would be using a full beasthood meter, which adds a maximum of 70% damage increase to your attacks, but my first goal was to reach the point where I could do enough damage for the 70% bonus to tip me over the 19.2k mark, which is enough to kill Orphan. The cane was obviously just not going to cut it for this challenge. Of course not, you can't cut things with a cane, dumbass. So, I needed to rethink my weapon of choice. For dealing massive amounts of thrust damage, there was only one real option. The old noob enabler itself. Ludwig's Holy Blade. It might feel like a rejected Dark Souls weapon, and I feel slightly dirty using it, but for pure skull crushing damage output, its two-handed R2 attack absolutely wrecks anything in its path, so it would be perfect for this run. In order to maximise the potential of the poor man's gems, I would need the uncanny variant of the Holy Blade, so I grab one from the side area after the first lamp in this glyph, plus tend it and gave it some bling, and went back to the seaside for another test. The improvement was noticeable immediately, with an increase of around 1200 damage compared to the cane. As I mentioned before though, in order to clear the 19k mark needed to one-shot Orphan, I would be using the 70% bonus available from a full Beasthood meter, which meant that without Beasthood, I would need to be able to do around 11.3k damage. Like a small child on a long car journey, I asked myself the question, are we there yet? And the answer was no, but not all was lost. Firstly, thanks to the magic of save edited chalices, I could obtain even better poor man gems for my weapon. So I farmed some more radials from layer 2 of this glyph, where not one, but two beautiful spirit waifus took turns to stab me with the pointy end, and then farmed some more triangles from layer 1 of this glyph. After many attempts, this was the gem setup I ended up with. Not bad, eh? You ain't seen nothing yet. On the other hand, still not quite good enough. Good thing all that farming left me with a metric shit ton of blood echoes. I used these to boost my strength up to 50. Why? Well, the Holy Blade is a quality weapon, meaning it scales with both strength and skill. More strength equals more thrust damage, which equals more overall damage. Simple stuff. 
With 50 strength, I managed to hit the magic 11.3k damage number, and things were looking very good indeed for once in my pathetic existence. Don't worry, this challenge isn't settled yet, because the most annoying part of it is yet to come. Sit down class, and let me tell you all a story about beasthood. As I mentioned previously, I would need to gain the maximum bonus of 70% from my beasthood meter. And to do this, you need at least 300 beasthood at the moment you attack Orphan. The maximum possible beasthood I could obtain by wearing the right clothing and the beast embrace rune was 445. This meant I would need my beast meter to be over two thirds full when attacking Orphan, which is much easier said than done. There are three main ways to build your beast meter. The first is to pop a beast blood pellet and slap the shit out of some enemies. The problem with this is that pellets don't last that long. The second and more efficient way is to use the beast claw in conjunction with the beast embrace rune, which puts you in a permanent state of beasthood. So it was time to get myself some long fingernails. I'll come back to the third way soon. I searched for this glyph, killed the beast possessed soul on layer 1, and grabbed the claws from the coffin in the layer 2 side area. Now I could finally cosplay as myself when I've just woken up. Beautiful. First things first, I would need to break my new toy in, and by break in, I actually just mean break. Why? Well, since I would need to be able to hit things as much as possible with my claws in order to build up beasthood, having them die on me would be a major inconvenience, so I actually wanted to do as little damage as humanly beastly possible. The fastest way to break a weapon is to travel to the cathedral ward, smash every pot around the lantern, and rinse and repeat until broken. So that's exactly what I did. I then used the doll as per German's instructions to see how much I could squeeze out of her. But unfortunately on normal new game, she proved to be about as squishy as you'd expect a doll full of great one man milk to be, even with the broken claws. So by itself this clearly wouldn't do. As I mentioned earlier in this section, there is a third way to gain a large amount of beasthood, and this is to buy a blood rock from the insight shop. One blood rock costs 60 insight, and although the max insight you can have is 99, spending more than 60 actually makes no difference at all. I popped all the madman's knowledge I had, found more insight by setting up and clearing the first Tumaru chalice over and over again until I had enough, and backed up my save to a USB. I am a man, arguably, and this, my friends, was my plan. First, I would buy a blood rock. Then, I would take out my pent-up frustration on the doll using R2 attacks with the claws. Finally, I would rush to the lighthouse hut and attack the fish monster people thingies nearby to max out my meter, sprint back to Orphan's fog gate making some blood bullets on the way to drop my health down, quit out as soon as I reached the fog, and back up my save to the cloud as I didn't want to overwrite the other save on my USB. Upon reloading, I would instantly pop a beast blood pellet to slightly top up my meter, go through the fog, and pray that Orphan starts the fight with his leaping attack, because otherwise, to use a technical term, I would be fucked. Simple, right? Well, actually, no. Problem number one is that you need to max your meter on the first fishman before any of the others aggro onto you because dealing with more than one at once with a set of broken beast claws is a pain in the backside, especially if the lightning summoners join the party too. After a lot of death and pain, I finally managed to create a safe state outside the fog, which led on to problem number two. Not only does Orphan only start the fight with his leaping attack some of the time, he also stands and stares at you for ages like, you what mate, I will fucking end you, before actually doing anything which means your beast meter is dropping all the while. Oh yeah, and because the Holy Blades R2 takes about six years to charge up, six hours later, if you delay for even a split second, you'll miss your backstab opportunity, even if he does leap at you, which is fun. After several frustrating attempts and reloads, it was finally time for the moment of truth.
for fuck's sake. I wasn't ready to give up yet though. I couldn't tell whether the issue was my beast meter dropping too far, as you can't see the actual numbers involved, or whether I just needed more raw damage. So I reloaded my USB save and resorted to the ultimate in cheese. I abused the com chalice. Please don't ban me YouTube, it's not what it sounds like. I leveled up my strength some more to up my thrust damage and hit the next overall level breakpoint for Viscerals. Bought the blood rock again, smashed the doll's face in, assaulted some more fishmen and made a new save state. For the second time, it was finally time for the moment of truth. Again. Here we go fam. Success at last, and totally worth the 20 or so hours I wasted doing this. Fun fact, since Orphan has no death animation for phase 1, he just stands there like a big dummy that hasn't worked out that he's dead yet. Thumbnail time! I dispatched the Shadow Baby, and as the DLC's end cutscene played out, I bathed in the glory of my most pointless challenge yet, while contemplating what video I could possibly make next. Coming soon. Can you beat Lady Maria by sliding into her DMs? As always guys, thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're not yet. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.